Um, I'd like to ask two questions here. I'll try to be very brief. Uh, yeah. Uh, the first question is, uh, would you be open to, at the last part of your talk that you gave, you know, you talked about regulation and about, you know, you gave the Socrates example. Would you be open to making a parallel with, like, Kuhnian revolutions and normal periods and crises in, in this account, like, with, on the online account? Another brief question. Given your experience in um, in science and policy, would you, and given the fact that this project is called One Expert's Disagreement, so there is disagreement with experts, would you still say that it is a continuum between uh, mundane cases of expertise and perhaps very complicated matters where there is, you know, would you still say that it's a con continuum given your experience and or maybe it is I don't know like if there is an expert you know there is a correct way yes I mean I I don't at all subscribe to the, the thought that whatever your problem there's an expert for that uh, because there may not be and uh, one of the things that also helps people to have confidence <coughs> is when uh, people with expertise acknowledge the limitations of their expertise and are up front in saying uh, uh, there are some things that I can't manage and when your doctor uh, doesn't pretend that you're immortal uh, that is r rather confidence building isn't it uh, because if he did pretend you would know that was sort of a bit of codding and just not not very helpful uh, as for Kuhn I hadn't really thought of uh, the Kuhnian distinction between paradigm shift and normal science. And I guess a great deal of what uh, one sees uh, in uh, the sort of the sheer noise in the system is objection to what we'd call normal science. For example, uh, we have certain um, uh, models, uh, and they're not silly models, of uh, what we think is a reliable way to test a uh, uh, a, a substance uh, to, for use as a medicine. And um, on the other hand, people will say, and they're correct, that the present clinical trials requirements take too much time, are too expensive, lead to fewer drugs being uh, tested and therefore coming uh, into use and therefore are damaging to patients. And there are some interesting, I don't know whether they're quite paradigm shifts, but when you read some of the uh, instances of uh, uh, patient activism on this front, it suggests different ways of going about it. The patients can do certain things because uh, they don't have to seek their own consent. They just have to collaborate with like patients uh, who are prepared to put it together. And there's a website, I think, called Patients Like Me, uh, which has a certain amount of reporting of uh, these collaborative pieces of uh, biomedical research instituted by patients and uh, reported with a bit of professional help on the stats uh, that way. For, uh, and, and they've done some quite interesting things. So I suppose one could bring the distinction between uh, uh, paradigm shifts and normal science into this and think about could we have more paradigm shifts on how we organize uh, getting better results or getting results out there faster. <laughs>